Hi everyone, this is Eric Adler and it's my pleasure to be speaking to you as part of Dan and Day. And today I'll speci specifically be talking to you about the natural history of Dan and disease. To do that, I'm gonna show you some slides. So for those who don't know me, I'm a professor of medicine at University of California, San Diego, and I specifically uh, study Dan and disease in my lab and perform clinical research on Dan disease as well. It's my pleasure to be speaking to you today and answering your questions later in the week on Dan. And. So as many of you know, and as Dr. Taylor uh, reviewed, Dan and is a highly penetrant, extremely morbid, um, X-linked multisystemic disorder. So by that, I mean it's highly penetrant in that if you have a mutation associated with Dan disease, you're likely to get Dan disease, especially if you're a male. And it's morbid. We know that patients with Dan disease often get quite sick because of the disease. And it's X-linked, so it affects the X chromosome, and it's multisystemic, so it affects the heart, the liver, the, um, the muscle, the brain, the nervous system, and the eye, among other organs that we know of are affected. And here are some pictures of x-rays of patients with Dan, and you can see they have a very big heart here. And this is an um, a echocardiogram, which I'll show you, which again shows a really thick heart in a patient with Dan disease. So Dan disease is, is a disease in which autophagy is abnormal. And autophagy is the cell's recycling system. And in this diagram here, you can see normally something called an autophagosome goes and picks up garbage around the cell. And that autophagosome is fused with lysosomes, which are basically little balls that have acid in and digest the garbage. So they're kind of like the garbage trucks coming around, picking up the garbage from the autophagosome. LAMP2 is this protein that allows the lysosome to fuse with the autophagosome and digest the garbage. And in patients with Danon disease, they don't have the LAMP2. And as a consequence of that, they cannot fuse these autophagosomes and lysosomes and these, these build up in the patients with Dan disease and their, heart, their cells are essentially full of, of this type of garbage. To study this process, members of my laboratory <coughs> developed AAV9.4 LAMP2. What is that? Well, that's a gene therapy that replaces the gene missing in Dan and the LAMP2. The, that protein that allows autophagosomes and lysosomes to fuse. And we gave that to a mouse in a virus, that that virus expresses the LAMP2. And in doing that, we see that the garbage that's in the cells, which you can see here, gets cleaned up so that the, the mice that got the AAV LAMP2 looked just like uh, normal mice. And their hearts started to function like normal mice. They started to squeeze as, almost as well as normal mice and they relaxed almost as well as normal mice. And it looks like they even lived as long as normal mice. So this is very exciting finding. So it looked like we found in our lab a potential therapy for Danon. But the problem was, is what were we gonna do now? We developed a, a promising therapy for this rare disease. We know it affects around five, 10,000 people. So how can we identify meaningful endpoints and study this in patients if we don't really understand the natural history of disease? So what is the natural history? What do we mean by that? Well, natural history of a disease refers to how the disease progresses over time, if there's no treatment given to the patient or if we just use standard of care. Understanding natural history helps us to find appropriate treatments for disease by identifying who might be the most appropriate patient to get treatment, in other words, in what stage of the disease, is it early, is it late in the disease, and then what to measure in the patients. So should we give measure something in the blood, should we measure how the heart contracts, et cetera. So natural history is critical, understanding natural history in humans is critical before we can do any real trial. And in my, in my lab previously, Michaela Brambati studied the natural history of Dan disease by looking at papers in, in which dis, patients with Dan disease were described. And doing that, we described two general um, natural histories one in men and one in women. And you can see that the disease in, um, in men occurs, it looks like it occurs a little bit earlier and often goes on a transplant a little bit earlier, often associated with 
um, cognitive impairment, so learning disability, and skeletal muscle problems. Whereas in women, the disease looks a little bit different. It looks like it, it, it presents a little bit later. It has both the thick heart muscles and sometimes also thin heart muscle that's just weak. Um, and the patients live longer, women live longer than men in general. But this was all just a study that was based on papers already published, but not a real natural history study. Um, now that being said, we get this pattern here from this literature re review that Dr. Brambati did, where we can see that men um, get disease in, in an early age and unfortunately start passing from disease um, as early as age 12 or 13 and throughout their 30s, where women tend to get disease a little bit later and live longer. And you can see um, about 50% of women are alive or requiring a heart transplant um, by age 50. And then by, by age 60, that go, number goes down to um, 30%. So men and women appear to have different, distinct um, courses of the disease based on what we know. Uh, women have a more variable presentation. They have different kinds of heart failure, different kinds of cardiomyopathy, and they usually generally see cardiac disease only with no change in liver function. Whereas in boys and men, it's more predictable course. They almost always have heart disease. They often have muscle weakness, and then they have, often have cognitive impairment and skeletal muscle problems, but there's still a lot we don't know. Um, there is a subset of women that seem severely affected and have similar presentation of males, and we need to study that more for sure, and we plan to do that. So we have this natural history study of Down disease, and we're doing a registry, and this is a collaboration between my good friend, Dr. Taylor, and myself, and this is looking at charts in patients with Down disease, and it includes um, patients or their parents or guardians are filling out a questionnaire about their experience with Down disease and provide medical records like imaging data, echoes, and MRIs. And this includes all males and females with Down disease that have a LAMP2 mutation, regardless of age, transplant status, alive, or deceased. And this includes over 80 patients, probably closer to 100 patients already now. And we have patients from all over the United States that you can see, and then all over the globe. These have patients from Europe. Australia, and certainly all over the U.S. that have DAN. And you can see about 81% of our patients in our, in our natural history um, uh, registry are from the U.S., and about 20% are international, and the majority are, are uh, Caucasian. That This natural history registry includes um, patients from as young as four to as old as 91, and the average age is 30. And it's about uh, a little more women than men, believe it or not, about 56% female and 44% male. We've learned a lot from this registry. And I, first of all, want to thank all of you who are participating because we're all helping each other. And we can't win the, the battle against Dan unless we're all in it. And by participating, and I know it's laborious to fill out these questionnaires and send your records, it's helping us learn a lot and helping us um, complete the trials that we need to do to, to treat patients. Um, helps us understand what clinical tests, labs, and measurements are important, and it's helping us um, confirm the findings from these published studies that we've already that we mentioned earlier. Um, we are also currently performing a prospective longitudinal natural history study. This is at UCSD currently, and we will be expanding to other centers. And this is a study that's going on three years and includes men and women with a confirmed mutation in that gene called LAMP. And at regular intervals, patients are flying to San Diego right now and getting cardiac assessments, neuromuscular assessments, cognitive assessments, eye studies, all kinds of studies, thorough studies, to really let us understand how this disease uh, progresses over time. You can see from our natural history study that we've been seeing um, both boys and girls, mostly boys, um, but uh, uh, we see that the, um, we're seeing cardiac disease in both the boys and the girls, much as well as the muscle disease. And less commonly, we're seeing uh, neurologic disease that's mostly in the boys and some visual problems both in boys and girls. But this is only 10 patients so far, and we hope to expand this, this trial over time. So how can you help? Please consider participating if you're not already in the Dannon Registry. 
is this enables us to learn more about the disease and we can treat it until we understand it. And if you can participate and you're not, please reach out to us. You can reach out to, to either myself or Dr. Taylor and we'll uh, work with you to obtain your records and answer questionnaires. And doing that as a community, I really feel we can make a, a huge difference in this disease. And I'm just so grateful for all of you uh, for, for um, listening to this message, for participating, for coming together because we're stronger together. And I look forward to putting this disease in the history books. So thank you very much. Thank you.